life is a peace of mind. A good life is a happy family. Now everybody loves one another, take care, and everybody, everybody is healthy. The good life is having lots of money, traveling, enjoy yourself, have uh, lots of grandchildren. Some things just live on, like the love of music. So let's meet some seniors who play different genres of music and are passionate about performing. Then, let's get crafty. It's the traditional art of craftsmanship and the zest to keep the craft alive. Then let's meet some local celebrities and find out what they have been up to these days as they continue to shine in their golden years. I'm Amy Chang and welcome to the final episode of The Good Life. For some seniors, music transcends time and the rhythm continues. Performing with others enlivens their soul. So let's give a listen to these next seniors who will knock your socks off. Hanafi, affectionately known as Nafi, learned to play the guitar while growing up. He is largely self-taught and believes in playing music from the heart. While he works in the day, he loves performing with a band at night. More than 30 years ago, you know, when we started in, in Kampong, you know, we were using the uh, hollow guitar, you know. As you know, uh, olden days, right, we don't have a uh, place to jam, you know. We just play uh, uh, under coconut tree, you know, like a from Malaysia Warung, you know. That's how we started. I started music, you know. And I don't learn music, in fact, you see. Not like a uh, present uh, uh, generation. We have a place to learn. Like us, we don't have. You know, we learn by, by ourselves. Sometimes I think uh, uh, present people, you know, they don't have feeling like how we do before. We don't read music, but we, we feel a lot of uh, music here, you know, our feeling, you know, our heart, from here, here. Sixties and seventies, you know, these are the songs, you know, you bring back memories. And right now in the market, you know, this type of music is very popular, you know. And uh, nowadays you don't see uh, a lot of bands playing this type of music. The era of nostalgic music is certainly kept alive, thanks to musicians like Nafi. I feel good, you know, especially when on the stage. I feel very good, you know. Especially uh, like uh, when you sing, uh, the, 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 the audience, you know, can get into you, together with you, you know. You feel good. Uh, as if you are, you know, you are, like in the heaven, you know. Really, really, uh, you know, you should be on my, my, my shoe now, you know. Uh, you're playing music on the stage where people clap hands, they appreciate your music. For 30 years I've been playing music, and, you know, without stopping at all. Huh? I feel good when I play the guitar. And I want people to appreciate what I'm playing. And that's very important, you see. This goes on, we just play music. Any club requires us, we just play. But right now I think I'm quite old, 52, you know. But I don't know how, how long more I can last. But give me another 10 years. I think I had enough. <laughs> From pop to classical music. In 1986, Mr. Khan travelled from native India to Singapore to promote North Indian or Hindustani music. Since then, he has been a performer as well as a teacher of Hindustani music in Singapore. Actually, when I was very young, I was very interested about this instrument. From the beginning, I liked sitar. Music is music. When we learn music on sitar, so the same music I can use on other instruments. But my favorite instrument is sitar. Through his teaching and performing, Mr. Khan continues to share his love for this unique music. I always perform according to the audience. Uh, opinion and then they must like they should enjoy our music if they enjoy it means I am successful and 
when I start performance, I also enjoy that music. Feeling comes out through my music. So for an artist also, very important, he must feel about music and then he can bring out good music from his heart. In my academy, music academy, near about 300 students, we are performing everywhere in Singapore as well as overseas. As a teacher and performer, Mr. Khan continues to share his love for Hindustani music and the music's spiritual qualities. When I started my academy, I know uh, to run academy music, to teach music, very struggling life. But I, I thought how we have to manage. Then that time I thought I must do some business behind of music. So I started my showroom. I am selling Indian instruments because when we teach students, they don't have instrument, they, they cannot learn. So I provide them best quality instrument to practice at home. So I thought in Singapore I can continue forever. Thanks to musicians like Mr. Khan, more will learn about a traditional type of music that has been around for centuries. From the sitta, we move to the erhu. Chinese classical music played by an informal orchestra takes us to the next musician. Mr. Kwok learned to play the erhu at an early age with no formal training. It is his interest that fuels him, and today he draws plenty of joy playing the erhu with his friends. Besides his passion for playing the erhu, Mr. Kwok also enjoys performing in a group. These musicians surely nourish the passion in different ways as they continue to share their passion for music with others. I'll be right back after the break to talk about TikTok and Snip Snip. They don't make them like they used to. A common phrase as modernization takes over good old-fashioned workmanship. Let's meet this next senior, a craftsman with a keen eye for precision. Mr. Chan has been a watch repairman since the 50s and now he is still in this trade for the passion of the craft. By continuing in his craft, Mr. Chang is preserving a traditional form of watch repair and helping others to appreciate the value of old-fashioned workmanship.
From clockwork to finely tailored suits that are custom made to fit, the Tang brothers have been turning their male customers into gentlemen with their craft. Ronnie and Tony belong to a breed of tailors who not only make suits by hand, but also provide personalized consultation from choice of fabric and shoes to how a gentleman can stand to carry off a suit. Those days, the family business require uh, family members to help out. At a young age, we were already involved in the work, but not doing the actual work, doing errands and uh, knowing about fabrics and uh, starting off with buttonholes. And uh, after we left school, we were put into the job. And uh, from there, we start working our way and uh, learning the business at the young age of 16. We recall back during the year 78, we were called to do the costume of the Hawaii Five-O on the CBS television studio. And that was a one-month job where two episodes was filmed in Singapore. And that was the testing point where I met with a big superstar like James McArthur and the rest of the stars. This is a personalized tailoring, so everyone is different. We work according to individual. We try to groom a customer to his profession. And uh, the clothes he's, he's going to wear will carry the image of his profession. If he's a banker, he looks like a top banker, he's a top banker. Satisfaction when we, when we are doing this, we have got to visualize uh, the, you know, like, right now it's, one look at it, we know like this is the, the jacket to fit the customer. We know the certain curving point and a certain part. Taylor now the days is no longer a normal tailor. Taylor who can advise people on what to wear, what cloth to buy, and make sure you meet it. You see, when you you can deliver and make them happy, they always remember you. They always hate a person who get. Who the, uh, the tailor who let them down, but they never forget a tailor that gives them a good suit. I have customers 20 years ago, they still bring the suit. Wow, you know how long you made this suit? Wow, that's what I call satisfaction. Uh, after so many years, people come and remark that. Ronnie and Tony know their craft. Every suit they make is as unique as the person who wears it. Their business is about making a male customer look good and sharp, even the perfect gentleman. Unique workmanship is suddenly alive and well as some seniors continue to preserve their craft. After the break, let's meet up with some local celebrities away from the limelight. We know their faces. They grace the media. They have left indelible marks of accomplishment in their areas of profession. We may be familiar with their public persona, but we may not be well acquainted with the other facets of their life. So let's meet up with some local celebrities and find out what they have been up to. Meet Margaret Chan, best remembered as the cockroach-crushing matriarch in the TV serial Masters of the Sea. She's also Emily in the play Emily of Emerald Hill. Margaret has won various hats during her illustrious career. Away from stage, we get to see what keeps Margaret going nowadays. I started theatre in 1957. I was Santa Claus in the Kid and Garden school play and I've got, I got bitten by the bug and that's it. So I've been doing theatre all along. In 1979 to 72, when I was a student at the University of Singapore, I did adult theatre. So I've done my master's and I've done my doctorate. It was more difficult doing the MA. The MA was in performance studies. Um, this was the Central School of Speech and Drama, uh, which is very well known in London. It was Sir Laurence Olivier's um, alma mater, I must say that. Mm. Okay. So it was in performance studies. It had a heavy theory base, but it also had a performance space. And this is all this modern kind of bodywork thing. And it was really difficult. I was, what, 50 at that time, and, and all these skinny old things and leotards leaping around. I was going, 
So I tried to use my voice. This is one lady of tenacity. Margaret has mastered courage and crushed challenges. Away from the stage, she's currently working in a position where she can groom the young. I'm Assistant Director of Arts and Culture at uh, the Singapore Management University. This is with the Office of Student Life, so I look after the Arts and Culture portfolio. We have a very active Arts and Culture scene, and so my job is to make it even more active. How do I excite the children? I suppose n not a single one of them knows me as a pioneer of English language theatre. I sort of tell them, and don't, I'm in the history books, that kind of thing, you know, like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But I suppose it's in the passion, it's in the knowledge, 30 over years of knowledge in your body. You've got theories also behind you and it really helps, gives you tremendous resonance in your work. I've been a part of the creation of two children. I've done some theatre, I've helped to English language theatre in Singapore. And I hope I'll be a good friend to the, the young ones I work with touch that little, light up the little passion, make them go, make them grow, make them blossom. It's a beautiful sight and I see a lot of that here. And I think a mother who has defined herself as a mother must know that this is the time when you move away from being centre stage and you must go to the wings. So I need to hang on to something, so I need to redefine myself, find find myself for this moment and I would say that I'm doing this with great joy here in the university. From the stage to the microphone, next we have Larry Lai, former DJ and TV host. We remember his distinctive voice on Ready Fusion and his familiar face on the Rado show. Away from radio and television now, we get to see Larry's other pursuits. The golden age of music in Singapore cannot be replicated. We just cannot make it happen again. Which is why I am trying very, very hard to try and resuscitate our music, keep it alive. And uh, during my autumn years, I want to restore as many of these rare songs as possible. Music is something I enjoy. It's my recreation, it's my work. This album, Vinyl Collection, really is uh, the sum total of my career. I can possibly lay claim to the fact that I started the first mobile disco way back in 1969. Apart from music, Larry also delights in chilling out with his friends. Because of the proximity of my house to the club, uh, I probably spend about five days here in a week. I play snooker quite a bit. A little bit of swimming, and when I get motivated, I go to the gym, especially when somebody mentions that, hey, Larry, you're getting a little bit, you know, fat. <laughs> These celebrities have definitely made significant contribution to the local entertainment industry, paving the way for others to carry the very torch they helped to light. Talented musicians, craftsmen and celebrities. These seniors celebrate the essence of life, which is to live it to the fullest. It's been a great show, and I hope we've learned a thing or two from these wonderful seniors who believe in living an active and meaningful life during retirement. I'm Amy Chang, and thank you for being part of The Good Life.